So the new project that we are going to begin on our MATLAB simulation is the simulation of electric vehicle power train in which we will implement different subsystems like your vehicle dynamics, motor control unit along with the longitudinal driver block and FTP 75 drive cycle as the input. So these are the certain vehicle dynamics blocks like your vehicle body, tire inertia and simple gear which we have already discussed on our previous simulation project. Now you can see that we have chosen a simple gear. So this block represents a fixed gear, fixed ratio gear or gearbox. No inertia or compliance is modeled in this block. Meshing and viscous bearing losses are also provided to fill out the parameters. Connections B that is base and F follower are mechanical rational conserving ports. And you have to specify the relation between base and follower rotation directions with the output shaft rotation parameter. Optionally, it includes thermal effects and expose thermal conserving port edge by setting friction model to a temperature dependent setting. Then the next block that we have used you can see is inertia. This block represents an ideal mechanical rotational inertia. The block has one or two mechanical rotational conserving ports. The difference is purely graphical as the ports are rigidly linked. The block positive direction is from its port to the reference point. This means that the inertia torque is positive if the inertia is accelerated in the positive direction. Now these are the motor control unit blocks that we will be using. First one is the DC motor block, then we have H bridge converter, then we have controlled PWM voltage, controlled voltage source, mechanical rotational reference and electrical reference that is ground. So the first motor control unit block is DC motor. This block represents the electrical and the torque characteristics of a DC motor. The block assumes that no electromagnetic energy is lost and hence the back EMF and torque constants have the same numerical value when in SI units. Motor parameters can either be specified directly or derived from no load speed and stall torque. If no information is available on armature inductance, this parameter can be set to some small non-zero value. When a positive current flows from the electrical positive to negative ports, a positive torque acts from the mechanical C to R ports. Motor torque direction can be changed by altering the sign of the back EMF or torque constants. The next block that we have used is H-bridge block. This block represents an H-bridge motor drive. The block can be driven by the controlled PWM voltage block in PWM or averaged mode. In PWM mode, the motor is powered if the PWM port voltage is above the enable threshold voltage. In averaged mode, the PWM port voltage is divided by the PWM signal amplitude par parameter which defines the ratio of the on time to the PWM period. Using this ratio and assumptions about the load, the block applies an average voltage to the load that achieves the correct average load current. The simulation mode parameter value must be the same for the controlled PWM voltage and H bridge blocks. If the reverse port voltage is greater than the reverse threshold voltage, then the output voltage polarity is reversed in this block. And if the brake port voltage is greater than the braking threshold voltage, then the output terminals are short circuited via one bridge arm in series with the parallel combination of a second bridge arm and a free wheeling diode. Voltages at ports PWM, reverse and brake are defined relative to the reference port. Then the next block that we have implemented on our motor control unit is controlled PWM voltage block. This block creates a pulse width modulated voltage across the PWM and reference ports. The output voltage is zero when the pulse is low. 
and is equal to the output voltage amplitude parameter when high. Duty cycle is set by the input value. Right click the block and select semiscape. Then you can have block choices to switch between electrical reference ports and physical signal input U to specify the input value. At time 0, the pulse is initialized as high unless the duty cycle is set to 0 or the pulse delay time is greater than 0. The simulation mode can be set to PWM or averaged. In PWM mode, the output is a PWM signal. In averaged mode, the output is constant with value equal to the averaged pulse width modulated signal. Then we have controlled voltage source block. This block represents an ideal voltage source that is powerful enough to maintain the specified voltage at its output regardless of the current passing through it. The output voltage is V is equals to Vs where Vs is the numerical value presented at the physical signal port. Then we have used longitudinal driver block and it is a parametric longitudinal speed tracking controller for generating normalized acceleration and braking commands based on reference and feedback velocities. We have used the external actions to input signals that can disable, hold or override the closed loop commands determined by the block and the block uses this priority for the input commands, disable, hold or override. Then we have used our reference signal in the form of FTP75 drive cycle source. It generates a standard or user specified longitudinal drive cycle. The block output is the vehicle longitudinal speed. You can import drive cycles from predefined sources or workspace variables including arrays and time series objects or you can import your files and we have to use the fault tracking parameters to identify drive cycle faults within a specified speed and time tolerances. Then we have used circular gauge which will display an input value on a circular scale. That is our speed of our powertrain simulation between the velocity and the time graph. Then we have used some commonly used blocks like your terminator which is used to terminate output signals and it prevents uh, warnings about unconnected output ports. Then we have used Simulink to PS converter which converts the Simulink input signal to a physical signal. Then we have used a power GUI signal which sets simulation type, simulation parameters and preferences. Along with it, it also provides sampling time that is required by your model. Then we have used a go to block which sends signals to from blocks that have the specified tag. If tag visibility is scoped, then a go to tag visibility block must be used to define the visibility of the tag. The block icon display selected tag name and scoped tag names are enclosed in braces. Then we have used from block which receives signals from the go to block with the specified tag. If the tag is defined as scoped in the go to block then a go to tag visibility block must be used to define the visibility of the tag. After update diagram, the block icon displays the selected tag name enclosed in brackets and the scoped tag names are enclosed in braces. So let us now move forward and start our today's project based on powertrain simulation. Okay, so the model is already complete and uh, we are now going to run and analyze whether the Nexon parameters that we have put in the vehicle dynamics in the motor control unit, uh, they are exactly following this pattern or not. So this parameter in kilometer per hour, this is also in kilometer per hour, the longitudinal driver. Now in the simulation, go to the simulation, uh, recenter, let us recenter our model. Stop time, you have to put 2474 seconds and let us run. So now as you run, our model is compiling. You can see on the gauges how the speed is incrementing and decrementing and in the display boards also, the 
meter per second it is 7.439 km per hour it is 26.78 km per hour so this is the final values <coughs> now let us go to the score you can see the two graphs are being shown one in the blue and one in the yellow the blue one is the reference signal that is the drive cycle and the yellow one is our output so our output is following very uh, very close to the reference signal that means <clears throat> the parameters and the uh, all the components that we have connected to our electric vehicle is uh, very much correct as we are following the drive cycle of a particular location that is FTP 75 in a proper way only you can see the braking somewhere is some little bit uh, delayed so only there is a problem little bit problem in the braking system you can optimize that graph even further by optimizing and tuning the PID controller gains that is your uh, KP and KI in the longitudinal driver again let us run this so again when I am running you can see the gauges are working correctly the horizontal gauge is in meters per second and the uh, circular gauge is in kilometer per hour right so in the scope block you can see as I said, the reference block and our output uh, reference signal in blue color and the output signal in yellow color, they are very much similar. There is only problem, very little bit problem in the braking. You can improve that by improving the PID control gain values, optimum values of KP and KI, or you can uh, increase or decrease the tooth ratio of your simple gearbox that also works in such cases. So you can see. Here the maximum velocity it is going up to 90 km per hour and at 2474 seconds the velocity is around 26 km per hour that's why in the display signal it is 26.61 km per hour. So as I said earlier the more our output velocity matches with the drive cycle the more uh, appropriate is our whole simulation model. So this simulation model as, as we discussed earlier is based on the parameters of the motors and uh, the vehicle dynamics of the Tartan Axon EV. So the drive cycle is being followed by our output that's why means if you uh, launch this particular vehicle simulation model if you implement this vehicle simulation model on a real time uh, electric vehicle and and launch it on it on the location from which this drive cycle has been or uh, uh, this drive cycle data has been evaluated or being uh, restored then your vehicle is going to perform similarly right so this is following the drive cycle that's why the appropriate model is being simulated so i hope you have learned a lot through this particular electric vehicle simulation now let us move forward.